Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport, ScooterWest.com here in lovely San Diego. I invited the owner of Vespa Portland down here for a ride in beautiful San Diego. And I let him borrow this piece right here. This is a black uh, GTS 250 circa 2009. And it was squealing like a stuck pig. Ooh. Is that, is that derogatory? <laughs> I don't know. Or vulgar? I'm not sure. But back to the point, the rear brake squeal, and it's pretty common on the GTSs. You know, at low speed, you'll hear that, that squeal like worn out brakes on a car, but they're not worn out brakes. So I'm going to show how to resolve squealing brakes on this Vespa GTS and pretty much any other motorcycle or scooter that has similar setup on brakes. Let's get right on to it. Let's fix this thing. <laughs> Robot amazed me with the lift technology here. He's got all these lifts on a wireless remote because having a wired remote is just too primitive, I guess. It wastes time. <laughs> <laughs> Click her up. How do you stop this thing? <laughs> it's not one of the other ones. So here's the rear brake caliper on the GTS. It's a hydraulic uh, brake caliper, has a pair of pads in it. Um, pretty simple to get out. A pair of uh, Allen fasteners, six millimeter Allen wrench will get that right out. Of course, you can't take it out without removing the wheel. So we'll pretty much go through the steps of removing the wheel, much like as if you were changing the rear tire. Front is pretty similar to the rear. It has larger pads because you have more braking force up front. Um, it's a different style caliper. It's got a pair of pistons on one side and it slides on a pair of pins that are like rubber isolated. I find the front is less likely to have any sort of squeal, you know, until the pads are, always, are all the way worn to metal to metal. Pretty simple to take off again. Remove the front wheel, which is easier than the rear, and pull the two Allen fasteners to separate the caliper from the knuckle here. So starting with some of the tools you'll need to remove the rear wheel. This would be the same tools you'd use if you're pulling this rear wheel to change out the tire or pulling the muffler to replace the gasket. Start with a regular 3 8 wrench. A larger size socket, it may be a half inch drive versus a 3 8 but you need a 24 millimeter socket to take off the axle bolt. You're gonna need a 17 millimeter socket to separate the the rear shock on the left side from the, the swing arm plate. Six millimeter Allen. The muffler on the GTS is gonna use a T40 Torx driver, so it's a star type bit. To remove the cotter pin for the main axle nut, I tend to use a large set of diagonals. You can also use needle nose, would work just as well. Got a screwdriver, I'll show you that later, not really needed. An extension, 3 8 And last, to hold the axle in place, I have the clutch hold it, holding tool. I think this is tool ETC, and it pops into the belt cover and will lock up the rear axle so you can easily remove the wheel and the large nut from the rear axle. So I already know the pads have plenty of life on this scooter. We just want to deal with the squeal. We have these rubberized, uh, shims. They're made of fiberglass with a high temperature rubber and a self-adhesive backing on them. Our part number on these is BP-SHIM and you put them on the back of the brake pads. So this, this is a new set of brake pads for the GTS. This is what you get if you purchase the original Piaggio brake pads. They do have a metal shim on the back, but you can add this extra rubber shim that will isolate some of the noise. Also, oftentimes your noise originates from this clip that doesn't put pressure on the pads, and I'll show you how to make the proper adjustments to this clip. If you're replacing the pads, of course they come as a pair. They're identical left and right for the rear. And if you're replacing the front pads, two variations on the pads for the GTS. If it's got ABS brakes, you're gonna use the pads that look like this. These are the centered brakes. They have uh, more braking force and they can run at higher temperature so they're a better quality brake pad at the expense of wearing down the brake rotor a little bit quicker. You can see they have a left and a right pad or different. You got this part that hooks onto a pin and there's a pair of pins that retain these pads. 
And I'll go ahead and take both calipers apart and show how the pads are changed out along with installation of these shims on the, the pads that are existing on this bike here. So muffler is nice and cool. Let's jump to getting the muffler off, getting the swing arm off and getting that rear wheel pulled so we can get, gain access to the rear brake caliper. You can see the scooter's just sitting on the center stand. It's nice I got it on a lift. Uh, you could do this on the ground uh, with ease. You don't need to have the center stand up. A 17 millimeter socket. And there's a nut that holds the clamp. You don't need to get too crazy, just loosen enough to get the clamp separated, you know, where it's got some movement, free play on it. Get the T40 Torx uh, driver. If you don't have a driver like this, you could, you know, use a little Torx style Allen. It's going to be a little difficult to gain access, but you can see I have the extensions. There's going to be three fasteners that hold the muffler in place. I tend to like the crack all three of them. And I'll go ahead and get two of them out. You know, they're just using hand tools today. Kind of typically what you'd have in a home shop. Don't necessarily need all the fancy power tools that I sometimes use. Fastener comes out, there's three different types of washers, a, a very thick, flat, this um, lock washer that has like a serration on it. It's a, a type of locking washer. You wanna make sure those are all in place. Not, not good when the muffler loses some fasteners or loses all three fasteners and falls off and ends up breaking the header, so I've seen it. Still a little tight. And the last fastener, I tend to put a little pressure on the bottom of the muffler. So the hole on the muffler bracket isn't dragging on the threads of the bolt. Makes it a lot easier to take out. Support the muffler and just pull it straight off the header here. You can see I'm kind of wiggling it. There's the gasket in there, it's still in good shape. Tire was recently replaced. Typically, if you're changing out the tire, it'd be a good idea to change this uh, bushing out. I have plenty of other videos that cover changing this exhaust gasket bushing out. If you owned a GTS for a while, you'll be very familiar with uh, a leaking exhaust bushing over the life of owning a Vespa, GTS that is. Signal fastener for the, um, the rear shock. It's a nylock locking nut, so it has some friction as you're pulling that nut off. Set that aside. Go ahead and pull the shock off. It just pulls right off that. And get the axle nut off. Got the cotter pin. So I'm using the dikes to kind of straighten out the cotter pin. Of course, you don't want to reuse these. They're very inexpensive. Um, you know, if you need to get under there, you can use a flat blade screwdriver or a needle nose, something to kind of get pried up. You can see needle nose will do the job just as well. Got to be careful if they're a thin pair of needle nose, you could potentially damage the, um, the tips and twist them up. And once you get it straightened out, this is, this was what the diagonal pliers work really good. You kind of grab the end and see how I'm kind of levering against the, and it's pulling it right out of the um, thing, out of the uh, hole right there. The, the castle cover for the nut can be removed. Now onto the other side, we'll go ahead and use our clutch tool to lock up the rear clutch. Use a flat blade screwdriver or thin pair of needle nose. Carefully pry this cover off. Very early models, they didn't have these rubber bushings. It was just plastic pegs right into the belt cover. Typically, those are pretty fragile, and uh, you could replace it with 
this cover into three um, rubber little grommets there. Ironically, in the parts book, when we're looking at these, I have no idea what the word uh, translates to, but they call them dumpies. I'm not sure why. Piaggio. So this nut's normally pretty tight. Go ahead and crack that free. Got the nut, a spacer, and the swing arm's now held in place with two Allen, the Allen screws. Need your six millimeter Allen. Again, you could do it with a basic L style Allen key, but So two identical uh, Allen fasteners, six millimeter. And one way to tell these from the wheel nuts that, or the wheel bolts is these have a thinner flat washer. You got a wave washer and a thin flat washer. And that's the way the pair of the uh, fasteners go right there. Go ahead and pull this off. You want to check this bearing, make sure it's smooth. Um, make sure seals are still in good shape. If there's any roughness or or it's falling apart, be an ideal time to change out the bearing. You'd heat up this casting and dry this bearing out with either a press or you could do it with a, a hammer and some type of punch and then press a new bearing in place. Bearing is not gonna be needed at this point. Uh, the, the clutch locking tool is still in place. <coughs> so go ahead and so I went ahead and just cracked all five of the fasteners loose, kind of doing it in a star pattern. Once you have them all loose, typically you could just remove them by hand. Uh, you get to see this has got a thicker washer, a thicker flat washer on it versus those pair that held the, um, the right side swing arm in place. and the last fastener here. So wheel slides off. Take care not to drag the shock across your wheel. Of course, this is a perfect time if you're gonna change a tire. We're right there to change a tire if you need to. Uh, maybe you wanna upgrade your scooter, put a black wheel, some other type of wheel, such as one of the SIP wheels, the 20 spoke wheels they make, um, many other Piaggio wheels that will fit this bike. They look pretty cool but we're not concerned with that right now. This tire is perfect. It's a lower price uh, Shinko tire, has plenty of tread on it, we'll go back on. So you got uh, the pair of pads, the metal backing plate, which are the two blue parts right there. And you can see the space between the edge of the caliper and that metal backing plate kind of is a good indication when you've looked at a lot of these pads on how much life is remaining, where you can judge the center gap between the two pads. Um, Pretty much if these pads, the gap was about the same thickness as the, the rotor, whatever that is, about 3 16 of an inch or four or five millimeters, you would be at the end of the life of the brake pads. I could tell these brake pads still have plenty of life on them. So we're probably gonna reuse these. Uh, this part is the anti-squeal clip. And I'll show you how to check to make sure that has enough tension to minimize the noise coming from the brake pads. And then there's a single pin retaining the pads and all this contraption all together. Go ahead and remove the, the brake caliper. I think they're the same length and everything as the wheel fasteners, same washers. So if you mix them up with the wheel fasteners, they're the same, same parts. Uh, one other thing to keep in mind is every two years you do want to flush the brake fluid that's what that, that's for, that's the, the nipple, the, the flush to brake fluid through. I'm not gonna do that, the brake fluid's uh, perfect in this scooter. You know, if you have a spongy feel to the brake lever, that's, you know, for instance, a time when you need to, um, to bleed the brakes. Caliper pulls right off and exposes the, the two um, brake pads right in there. This brake pad's seen some corrosion. Still has plenty of serviceable life in it, even though it does have some exterior corrosion. If there's any sort of leakage of fluid coming out of this from the brake fluid, 
I would just suggest replacement of the whole caliper. Uh, many of these newer Piaggio uh, calipers don't have a rebuild kit. You know, essentially the rubber seals that all go inside this caliper. You can't get a kit for it. You just replace the caliper. They're pretty inexpensive. Some of the earlier brake calipers, such as the caliper found on the LX, the ET4, the PX, those do have a kit available to rebuild. So go ahead and push the pistons back in. Just carefully, you can do it with the flat blade screwdriver. There is a specific tool for doing this. And I'm just twisting. If the pistons aren't going back in, it may be you have the brake reservoirs, you know, at the, the master cylinders up in the handlebars. They may have too much fluid in it. You may need to drain some of the fluid. Another problem is if you have heavy corrosion on the caliper, the pistons may have corrosion and brake dust and may not retract back into these uh, cylinder bores for the pistons. So essentially a brake caliper is a pair of pistons that takes hydraulic force to push those uh, pads onto that brake disc. All right, so there's a single pin that, that retains the brake pads and they have this hitch pin you pull right out, don't lose that little hitch pin. You could find it, but it's not available as a spare part. And then you could pull the pin right out. You have the clip. The clip does have a little arrow, shows the direction of your brake caliper and the movement, but you can kind of just remember that the, this larger part goes up you know, when you reassemble it. Then you have the pads. One thing to keep in mind, if you're reusing pads, remember what side. So that's my left side pad. This is my right side pad. Let me show you these used pads versus uh, new pair of pads. Kind of give you an idea how much um, material or brake pad meat there is. So there's a new pad, there's the used pad. You see these pads still have plenty of serviceable life. They're a little bit thinner than new pads, but not by much. So we'll go ahead and put the, the shim material on. Uh, looks like we'll be able to do the whole caliper with just one shim. The BP shim kit comes with a couple of these, so you have enough to do the, the complete scooter. So we could do the front as well. Not really an issue on the scooter. I'm not gonna put the shims on the front because the front's not squealing. You kind of size it up. You could see the outline of where the piston pushes on the pad. That's, that's where you, you may end up with some squeal. So we'll go ahead and kind of make a score. Use the razor blade. You could also cut these with um, a pair of sharp scissors. We'll cut this stuff just fine. It's not too critical as long as you cover the whole entire area that the brake piston makes contact. That's all that's important right there. So, you know. You can even see that that moves a little bit. That might be part of the problem. So I just went ahead and stuck it like that. It's not overlapping on any part of the, um, the backing plate, which is important. And repeat for the, the other side. Go ahead and cut some off on this. Hard to get the um, backing off with gloves on. So that's our right side. This is our left side. Keep those uh, separated right there. Before we put the caliper back together, we're going to go ahead and clean the caliper up. You know, also part of the noise sometimes is the brake dust that builds up on the caliper. I'm going to take some non-chlorinated regular brake parts cleaner and just spray it spray it out you know, over a dish. And this stuff evaporates rather quickly, so no need to really blow dry it. It'll evaporate right off. And we'll go ahead and take my left, left pad and go ahead and slide that in. Make sure you slide it in the right way. I have seen brake pads installed incorrectly where the, um, the metal backing is facing the rotor and that's gonna make um, 
some damage on the rotor rather quickly. Then we want to take this little shim here. If you're reusing the shim, you want to bend it a little bit so it makes a good contact on the, uh, the brake pad. So I kind of give it a test fit, get the pin started. I don't know if you can see all that. Put that in there. And you can see there's some force on the, the pad. This shouldn't move around. If it's moving around, it's gonna make, you're gonna have noisy brakes. Drop the other pad in. And go ahead and drive the pin all the way through. You use the butt of a screwdriver or a small hammer. And you see that little hole for the uh, hitch pin? You can turn that where you can get the, the pin right in. Clips nice and tight. You know, the pads are pushed out. And one thing is adding those brake, brake pad shims does make the thickness of the brake pads you know, a little bit. So they're not ideal to put on brand new brake pads. You want to put them on to a used set of brake pads. Make sure it slides nice and free on, on the rotor. If it's binding up, you're going to need to um, shave some of the material on a piece of sandpaper, the brake friction material. Um, typically not a problem if you're putting brand new brake pad kit. You want to check your rotor. There is a measurement tool to measure the thickness, but typically you can just feel the rotor. You can feel the thickness of the rotor, kind of inner part where the brakes don't actually make any physical contact. And if you feel a pretty good step, that's usually an indication your rotor's at the end of its life. Another thing to keep in mind is it's a good idea to scuff this up with 80 grit if you're replacing the brake pads. And last but not least, you want to inspect the splines on the carrier while you have this all apart. You see the brake. The brake um, carrier pulls right away. They do have a measurement on this, 3.5 millimeters. So if you measure this and it came in under 3.5 millimeters, that would be an indication it's time to uh, replace your uh, brake pad. Oftentimes I like to put a little bit of anti-seize or you could put a very thick grease on the splines just to protect the splines and keep corrosion down. You know, also on the shaft where the bearing rides. So, you know, this is just standard anti-seize, called marine grade uh, anti-seize lubrication compound. Uh, in a pinch, you could use a thick grease. Just keep in mind, grease may be slung onto the brakes if you use too much. And grease and brakes, you know, that doesn't mix very well. So slide that back on, slide the little cone. Slide the caliper back in place. Get the pair of screws started. Again, it's important to get them started. Start with the bottom screw because it's a round hole. And then the upper screw is a kind of a elongated hole. And if you're using a torque wrench, you want to torque this to about 16 foot pounds, about that. You know, when you're wrenching all the time, you kind of have a good feel of what each fastener, you know, pretty much every eight millimeter fastener that's standard grade 8.8 .8 is going to be around 16 foot pounds. Um, I forgot what that comes out in Newton meters, I think 12, if I recall. Wheel goes back on. Perfect time to uh, wipe the inside of your wheel. You see the brakes kind of leave some good residue in there. You know, take any sort of rag. You don't want to use any of that brake parts cleaner on these wheels. It will kind of uh, dull or loosen up the finish. You know, this factory kind of silver powder coated finish make it look pretty bad. Slip the wheel right up in there. You know, see the shock is kind of a little bit in the way. But. And to slide up and line up the holes, get all your fasteners started. You know, perfect time to inspect your fasteners. Any of them are uh, in poor shape, just replace them. Or if they've been severely over torqued or I still have the clutch. 
locking tool in place. Sixteen foot pounds in a crisscross pattern right here. And if you're unsure of what you've torqued, you may want to have a paint pen or a sharpie handy and mark each fastener as you torque them so you can verify that you have torqued each of these fasteners. And again, there's no need to over torque these. Just make sure the hardware's in good condition and you're, you're good to go. Never seen any problems with these as long as everything's torqued correctly and the fasteners are in great condition. Swing arm plate goes back on. Pair of fasteners that hold the, the plate to the engine. Hand tight and then on to 16 foot pounds. Short spacer goes on and then the nut. This is torqued to 80 foot pounds if you're going to use a large torque wrench. 80 foot pounds is quite a bit with a hand tool. You're not going to do it with a short wrench. You would need something that's 18 inches or longer to, to torque to about 80 foot pounds by hand. Unless you have a short one, you're going to jump on it. You know, make sure you don't topple the bike over. And that's about 80 foot pounds right there. Put the, the castle back onto the nut. And you can see it's got many different positions. And you want to find a position where it centers perfectly with the hole. You can see that's not so good, this one. Center is nearly perfect with that hole right there. Slide the brand new cotter pin. I mean, in a pinch, you could use the used cotter pin, but probably not the best idea. Give it a couple taps. And so what I like to do is take this and in a rolling motion, kind of just curl the cotter pin around here. Give it a couple taps. It's always good to have it tucked in there because the problem is those will catch catch stuff even though it's behind the the muffler it's just a good idea to... all right so lift the shock right into place kind of slide it onto that boss flat washer nylock nut and a 17 millimeter socket torque it to about 25 30 foot pounds and back to the muffler. So we can put the muffler on, kind of use the verbiage I was just talking about, get the, uh, the spacer in place, go ahead and slide it onto the header until the muffler is sitting flat on all three of the bosses on the right hand swing arm. So get the fasteners all in place. And I'm just hand tightening. I'm lifting on the muffler a little bit, make it a little easier to spin the fasteners in. 16 foot pounds. For all three fasteners here. And, you know, verify that your uh, clamps in, in the right spot and hasn't slipped. And this one, they do have a specific torque, but I found you do it more by feel, especially with a new uh, muffler bushing. One thing to keep in mind is you may want to put the anti-seize, the same anti-seize I put on the splines on the threads of the bolt. That bolt tends to run very hot. And, you know, sometimes the bolt can seize up, you end up replacing the whole clamp or cutting it off. 
So clamps tight, I kind of just had a feel for it. Um, first it's easy, then it rapidly gets pretty uh, stiff. Don't want to crank at it too tight. Probably I would say I got about 25 foot pounds, 20 foot pounds in there. So all bolted back together, take the tool out of the, the clutch. Pump up your brakes. And now should, we should have noise-free brakes. So the front brakes are working perfect on this GT, GTS here, but I'm gonna show how to overhaul the front brake system on this bike. First of all, you wanna lift the front of the scooter up. You can see I have the scooter on the center stand. I go ahead and put some sort of jack, or you could use wooden blocks, center blocks, whatever you got. You know, something that will be stable and lift the front of the, uh, the scooter up just ever so slightly. You know, just enough where the wheel comes right off the ground. It's a good time to kind of feel your wheel bearings. It should be a very smooth um, motion. There should be no detents or, or grinding or anything. You know, if you have some problems, you may need to change out your, uh, your front wheel bearings. So go ahead and crack all these. So you can see I'm reaching up. I have a long reach when the scooter's up on a lift, but that's how you can lock up the front wheel with the brake caliper in place. Same fasteners as the rear. You got the wave washer and the thick flat washer. Wheel comes off and now you got the brake caliper exposed. One thing about these brake calipers, they don't have a clip. The, the pins are threaded into the brake and you go ahead, I would go ahead and crack those two Allen fasteners on the backside of the brake caliper with a five millimeter Allen wrench. because they're gonna be very difficult to do, do so once you get the caliper unbolted, so. And these usually have Loctite on them, so they're gonna be quite a bit of friction. I'll get them pretty far out, but I'm gonna leave them in place. So those are pretty far out at this point. Move on to the other side. We're gonna use the six millimeter Allen to separate the brake caliper from the center brake carrier or knuckle or whatever you wanna call that piece. And this is pretty much the same on all modern Vespas. It's the same configuration, whether you're dealing with a Primavera, a PX, um, the nine, four, six, any of them. So. so go ahead and loosen those two. You can see the brake is starting to fall away. A couple uh, washers in there. You have the, uh, the single wave washer on the top and I'm pretty certain the lower one has got a little bit more going on on it. So, so you pull this out you have the wave washer, you have the clip that holds the speedometer cable if you have a speedo, uh, mechanical speedometer cable, and then there's a flat washer in there as well. That's only on the lower, the lower um, caliper mounting. Go ahead and pull that off. Um, you'd measure and inspect the rotor in the same means as you would the, um, the rear. You know, make sure the thickness is correct. 3.5 millimeters of minimum thickness but you can feel it. I can tell this has a little bit more wear than the, the rear rotor, pretty typical, because uh, most of your braking is from the front. You can see the pair of pads, just like the rear. Go ahead and dry the pistons back home. I'm not gonna put brake shims on these because there's no problems with them, but I'll go ahead and clean up the caliper and show how it's overhauled here. So five millimeter Allen fasteners, go ahead and get these the rest of the way out.
So I tend to look, start with this one, get this one out of the way. And if you want it to be a little easier, you can push down on the pads. You see where my thumb is? I'm putting a little pressure on the, uh, the pins and the pins will pull right out. Uh, they got a little bit of rust. You can clean that up with a little wire wheel. You know, if there's heavy corrosion, unfortunately, there's not a rebuild kit for these calipers. You just replace the whole caliper. Keep in mind that a new caliper also includes brake pads as well, so. And a little pressure. Pull the pin out. Two different styles of pads. Got the, the one on the inner and the outer doesn't have that little hoop there. The pair of pistons in there is a clip that puts pressure on the pads. If you have squeal, you may need to make sure that pat, that clip is pushing pressure onto the, the brake pads. It kind of pushes pressure right on these two pins. That minimizes the squeal that will come off the, um, the brakes. So just like the rear, when I clean it, you can clean it off with brake, some type of brake cleaner. And one other thing you want to inspect with these, uh, this style caliper is the sliding pins. So you see they got rubber boots and then a pair of pins. You can see there's grease on the tips of those pins. Um, you could put some new grease on there. I would suggest like the Maxima waterproof grease. We sell that in both a real small tub and this size here. And you could just go ahead and wipe some on there. Be careful not to get too uh, crazy with the grease because any excess grease that's pushed out will end up inevitably getting on your brake pads. And that's not good. Make sure the rubber boots are still in good shape. Go ahead and slide that in very carefully. You know, the rubber boots kind of have a tendency to want to um, wipe some of the grease off. Go ahead and get the excess grease out of there. Just using my fingers. Probably do it with a little better detail with a rag or something. And just to show you the used pads versus the new pads, the thickness here. Just ever so slightly thicker. So these pads still have plenty of serviceable life. The blue back pads are the original um, organic pads that you found on a non-ABS GTS or any of the other scooters, you know, the 150s, the 50ccs, 125s. These Ferrotos are the, the OEM pads found on the ABS equipped models. You can put these on the older bikes, you're gonna have stronger braking. You gotta keep in mind if you have stronger braking, you're more likely to lock up the brakes. Uh, but if you're looking for to maximize your braking performance, it may be a, a wise uh, upgrade. It's something I would do on my own personal bike. You know, I always like to have stronger braking. Pads go in, this one hooks right on to the um, thing. And you can see, I kind of set it up with the, the groove, you know, the, the slot for where the, the brake pad would drop in. I know everything's really dark right here. And you could slide the pins right in. So get the pins in place. Got to kind of wiggle the pads all around. And I would just suggest getting them in place getting it started. Uh, you want to put a small amount of Loctite on both those threads there. All right, so just a small amount of Loctite. That's uh, a little bit more than a small amount, but typically you can just wipe it off and wipe it on the next threads right there. You know, if you put too much of it. And I'll just get those started. They're going to be hard to thread in with, by, just by holding the caliper. So if it's a sliding style uh, caliper, such as the one found on the, the fronts of the 250s or the Primavera 125 or Sprint 150, um, it would be this style. If it's the front found on the smaller scooters or ET4 LX, you're gonna have a caliper that was very similar to the, um, the rear caliper on this GTS. Again, different, different brake pads for different applications. So you want to get the pads kind of uh, prepared, you know, kind of slide them open and see they kind of want to want, you know, walk around, do some fun, funky stuff in there. And then go ahead and slide this right over 
the rotor. Just like that. And we're pretty close to getting this in. Get the first screw in there. Let's get it started. Then the second screw, you can eyeball that, put the flat washer in there. Get the, um, the clip and the Allen screw along with uh, the wave washer. If you need to change this front rotor, you would need to dismantle that cotter pin and the axle and you'd be able to slide the hub off, the front hub and gain access to the rotor. One thing about these rotor bolts, they're all Loctite in place, so you're gonna need to heat that whole assembly to free up all those screws. You know? All right, so you got the caliper, got the two bolts in there. Give them a 16 foot-pounds of torque and action here. Got the caliper in there. And we'll flip around to the other side and we'll get those two pins in. You see the Loctite on there. You know, again, they're a little difficult to turn by hand. Yeah, I'm getting it, getting pretty far. And these don't need to be torqued all that much, just 10 foot pounds or something, just enough to seat them in there. We'll get the wheel back on. Double check all your work if you're yeah, you know, you're dealing with the break-in system. Don't want your break-in system to break. So wheel goes back on. Pretty much the same thing if you're changing a car wheel. Let's see if lug nuts that uh, bolts go on, or nuts go on to, you got five Allen bolts with the split washers and those thick flat washers. And if you're riding in the rain, it, it may not be a bad idea to add something like the anti-seize to the threads of the bolts. Keep them from uh, rusting, seizing up into the aluminum. All right, so they're all snug. Now you can go back around and torque them 16 foot-pounds. So boom, boom, boom. See, I'm skipping the bolts, kind of tightening them in a star pattern. Just like the rear, if you're un not confident in what you're doing. Make sure you mark what bolts you've torqued. Don't want to mess around. So anytime you work on the brakes, especially if you retract the pistons on the caliper, you're gonna have no pressure in the brake system. So check that out. See the lever goes to the grip. So both those, you wanna pump them until you got brake feel. Right now the levers, they feel perfect. There's no extra mushiness to it. The rear is always gonna have a little bit more sponginess or mushiness or however you want to call it just because the brake line is a lot longer but feels nice and tight brakes should be all good for the next several thousand miles we'll take it on a test ride and see how it does so i ho hope that helps everybody out you know it's pretty much covers any of the problems you may uh, come across with the braking system on any modern vespa or even a vespa px with disc brakes up front you know the squealing noise or if you need to change the brake pads Pretty straightforward, simple job. Um, I think in the previous videos, I have one on flushing the brake fluid, which is something you should do every two years. You always wanna check all your braking components for leakage. You know, you can look in there for any type of brake fluid leakage on the master cylinder at the hoses. Uh, very critical, you keep up the braking system. Um, until next time, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport, scooterwest.com here in San Diego. Thanks for all the help. Andy from Vespa Portland. Support those guys, they're pretty awesome. Um, follow us on Instagram, Vespa Motorsport. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook or whatever, Robot Vespa. And if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe and hit the little bell or wherever that is. Kind of reminds you of all the videos. I like to come out with a video once a week, uh, sometimes hard in the summer, but I'll keep on doing it. We're over 400 videos strong. Till next time, Robot here.